hey y'all welcome back to my channel sorry i haven't been here like i've been posting videos not posting i'm shut up <laughs> i've been recording videos but i haven't been in the editing mood i've been in a little slump you know finals got me a little beat even though i got straight a's for my grades right here if y'all need tutoring in math specifically or like just let me know and if you're kind of a person that just uh like to go through the notes or like to see people's notes that is the kind of thing that help you check out my notes on no unity i'm trying to build my platform on there and i would love if you guys would join my group as well call all things um scholarships where i talk about scholarships more in depth and help you find scholarships and pursue your scholarship journey that leads me into this video this video is requested from oh. Oh. my bad this video is requested from a uh, person on that group that asked me to do a video shout out to you uh they wanted to know easier ways to make the applying process easy because it's, it's a little stressful so that's what i'm doing right now i have my notes here that i will be going off of so i don't miss out on anything so i'm gonna start with the basics because i know you guys know about scholarships but you might not know like the logistics so there are different types of scholarships they normally fall into two categories whether that be external or internal i think of external as anything outside of the uh, institution you're planning on going to external outside internal it is revolved or tied to the organization in one way or shape or form that you're going to uh, so whether that be it's on the school website or it's one that the school gives you or it's a scholarship you found somewhere else but it says you have to go to that specific school that is internal because it's tied or linked somehow to that institution meaning you will not get that scholarship money if you decide to go to a different institution i will be focusing more on like uh external because those are the type of scholarships i have won so far i haven't won any internal scholarships because i have not graduated or committed to a university okay <laughs> now we got that out of the way um more of like where to find each type of scholarship and then i'll do a tutorial if you guys would like uh a little bit on like what what are the steps this is just a tips video and then i can go into it in a different video i'm thinking about doing a scholarship series anyways so for local scholarships which is the ones i would prioritize a uh, few places you could look on your high school website and go in person to your uh, counselor slash career office and check it out normally they have a bulletin board or you could like make an appointment with your actual counselor and ask um local churches rotary clubs uh, any local organizations or clubs also so you, the way you can do that is by word of mouth like oh, blah, blah, blah. or you could be like a rotary club in new york or rotary club scholarships for high school students in and then put your region they normally pop up that way because the rotary clubs have websites so and then you can also do this through websites like bold.org too, but you just have to really narrow down the search and make it really specific. If y'all need tutoring in math specifically or like, just let me know. And if you're kind of a person that just uh, like to go through the notes or like to see people's notes, that is the kind of thing that help you check out my notes on no unity i'm trying to build my platform on there and i would love if you guys would join my group as well call all things um scholarships where i talk about scholarships more in depth and help you find scholarships and pursue your scholarship journey that leads me into this video this video is requested from oh. Oh. 
my bad. This video is requested from a uh, person on that group that asked me to do a video. Shout out to you. Uh, they wanted to know easier ways to make the applying process easy because it's, it's a little stressful. So that's what I'm doing right now. I have my notes here that I will be going off of so I don't miss out on anything. So I'm gonna start with the basics because I know you guys know about scholarships, but you might not know like the logistics. So there are different types of scholarships. They normally fall into two categories, whether that be external or internal. I think of external as anything outside of the uh, institution you're planning on going to. External, it's outside. Internal, it is revolved or tied to the organization in one way, or shape, or form that you're going to. Uh, so whether that be it's on the school website, or it's one that the school gives you, or it's a scholarship you found somewhere else, but it says you have to go to that specific school that is internal because it's tied or linked somehow to that institution, meaning you will not get that scholarship money if you decide to go to a different institution. I will be focusing more on like uh, external because those are the type of scholarships I have won so far. I haven't won any internal scholarships because I have not graduated or committed to a university. Okay, <laughs> now we got that out of the way. Um, more of like where to find each type of scholarship and then I'll do a tutorial if you guys would like uh, a little bit on like what what are the steps? This is just a tips video and then I can go into it in a different video. I'm thinking about doing a scholarship series. Anyways, so for local scholarships, which is the ones I would prioritize, uh, a few places you could look on your high school website and go in person to your uh, counselor slash career office and check it out. Normally they have a bulletin board or you could like make an appointment with your actual counselor and, and ask. Um, local churches, rotary clubs, uh, any local organizations or clubs also. So you, the way you can do that is by word of mouth, like, oh, blah, blah, blah. or you could be like a rotary club in New York or rotary club scholarships for high school students in and then put your region. They normally pop up that way because the Rotary Clubs have websites, so. And then you can also do this through websites like bold.org too, but you just have to really narrow down the search and make it really specific. Okay, and then for national scholarships, I'm not gonna really focus on those, but those are the big ones like the, the Burger King one, the Coca-Cola one, Jackie Robinson one, those are really promoted to you. So you don't really have to go looking for them because they're so well known. But uh, if you wanna find even more of those, cause you have a lot less likelihood of winning, therefore you need to apply to more of those, you know, to have a chance. Um, I would just do Google searches and College Board has a pretty good list, but that's the thing about College Board. It's very competitive because the majority of their scholarships on there are national. Like, anyone can apply for them, you know, kind of thing. So, I wouldn't lean on those too much, but that is a resource you can use. And like I said, I'm going to put a tutorial in here going through each step and showing you guys, like, how I would do it based on what type of scholarship I'm trying to find. And then internal scholarship, like I mentioned before. Um, this can be found on the college's websites or other websites, but they're really specific about what school you, yeah, like it'll have a thing saying you have to go to blank school to get this award or you have to commit to blank school to get this award, even though it might not be on the school's website. Like for example, Thurgood Marshall is a really good organization that gives out a lot of scholarships to minority students and they're really tailored toward HBCUs. So 
if you're not going to an HBCU or if you're like HBCU, HBCU, and then you graduate and you're like, oh, I'm going to go to PWI because it's a little cheaper, then you lose that scholarship because they specifically said you have to go to HBCU. And sometimes it even it's more narrow, like you have to go to one of these three HBCUs to be eligible. So that's what I classify that as an internal scholarship. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said before, if you haven't joined or if you want to learn how to join, learn how to join girl you just click the button anyways if you want to start your scholarship journey and would like my help and the help of my group members feel free to join my group on no unity and follow me on there to see my notes <laughs> just a little plug uh, now let's get into the tutorial and then i'll get into the tips Okay, so I have a bookmark right here, but you would just go to bold.org and you would make an account. I already have an account, so I'm already logged in right here. I'm going to leave the link to make an account with bold.org in the description. And I'm going to leave the link to my profile just in case you guys want to nominate me <laughs> because I'm out here trying to make money too. Oh, it looks like some new scholarships just came in. So there is this one. If you are a law, medicine, or political science major, and you're a Christian, and you're an undergrad or graduate student, yeah, check this one out. This is the prompt, if you guys just want a sneak peek. Anyways, that doesn't apply to me. I just wanted to show you guys that because it's new, so... Anyways, if you're going for local, right, you want to go to view all and then you want to go to whatever your education is and get narrow as possible. So you would want to, well, say you're doing it for business and you would always make sure it's open because you don't want to get there and it's not open. <laughs> But then you can see, oh, okay, here's a scholarship. Here's a scholarship. You need to just go through and see. Sometimes, I'm trying to find one to show you guys this very specific. Sometimes, see here. Okay, this is how you find local ones. When you click on it, you look at the uh, requirements. And then it will say specifically... Uh, Pennsylvania or New York or whatever and that's how you know like okay this is narrow because there might be a tons and tons of high schoolers on the app but there's not a lot of high school students that are women that are in Pennsylvania that are pursuing business you see it narrows the pool down even though there's still be competition it won't be as much competition Another way I like to find local scholarships with this resource is they took it off of their new platform, but I still like to finesse the system. So, <laughs> so even though it's not on their new platform, because I know they updated their website, but if you go to their blog, go to their blog. And then go to scholarships. It will tell you like a lot of different information about scholarships and show you a lot of scholarships here as well. But if you go all the way to the bottom, now it has more options. See right here. So say you live in Texas. You click on Texas. And I would only show you scholarships for people in your area. And with this, you just make sure you go through and you meet all the uh, eligibility requirements. You guys know what I mean. The requirements for the scholarship. See, it even gets specific. Like some of them will say districts you have to be in. Some of them would ha uh, have like a high school that you have to graduate from or be currently attending. And that narrows down your competition for that scholarship.
The feature is they just made this uh, eligible for scholarships feature. So if you click on it, it'll show you scholarships that you are, you personally, after you make your profile based on your information, you are eligible for and also that you have a really, really, really high likelihood of winning because only uh, this amount of percentage of people are eligible on the platform. So that's another pro tip as well. That is not sponsored. This is just a resource that I love to use and have been a finalist multiple times and a scholarship winner on as well. Um, I hope to one day be sponsored by Bull.org or become an ambassador. I'm still waiting to hear back, so we'll see. But um, furthermore, let's get into the tips to make this process less tiring. First of all, I would not recommend to write an essay. Like, every time you apply, don't write any essay. I say this with a caveat. I say, write a few essays that are, like, around different uh, common topics. So, like, one about uh, uh, community service. Why do you want to do your major? Why do you want to pursue that degree? After you pr pursue that degree, what do you want to do? How is it going to make an impact? Stuff like that. And then, once you have that and you see, like, okay, you start seeing success, um, obviously, like, if it's not working, you keep getting rejected, you know, keep editing that and, you know, keep making it better. But once you get that success essay... Uh, then all you have to do is tweak it. So let's say the prompt is, let me just look at one. The prompt is, why have you chosen to pursue a career in this field? And what ideal future roles do you have? Or plan to have, it says plan to have, my bad. So say you have one about why you're pursuing this major. You can tweak that and elaborate on it and say why and what you want to do. For me, I would say I am pursuing blah, 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 major, nursing, and, you know, talk about why I want to pursue nursing and you know, what was my aha moment, and then talk about how I want to be an RN, and I don't know what specialty I want to do as of right now, but I know I want to help live help save lives or something like that you know like yours is personal but that's how you see I took that I took that generic essay and I like tweaked it and now it's like personal to this scholarship instead of like every single scholarship I'm writing a new essay because that'll burn you out that'll burn you out next tip okay <laughs> so have two to three letter letter of recommendations I was talking too fast um, to speak, that speak to different characteristics of you. So, I would not have all your little of recommendation come from all teachers or all coaches or ev each one is a STEM teacher or in a STEM department. I would really have it be kind of spread out so one can be from someone uh, who's your community service advisor, one could be from a coach, one could be from a teacher, or one could be from a teacher that you did arts with and another one uh, that's more related to your major, and then, like, a coach or, like, uh, someone else different. Because different, that way, you get a better chance of them teach and talking about, like, I don't know how to explain it, different aspects of you they the people if it requires a letter of recommendation they would get to see different aspects of you like as a whole being they won't just get to see like each letter won't just be like oh she's really smart or talk about your academics some will talk about um your humility uh and cuz you know the person you did the community service for might talk about your humility and your patience um the teacher might talk about how you're always on time to class and your respectfulness. The coach might talk about your determination and uh, your press, you know, 
your push so that's why i say that and this way also you don't have to ask for a lot of recommendation every single time you need to apply to a scholarship you just have those on hand so that will make it less stressful especially for the people who have like anxiety or feel you know <clears throat> about asking professors <laughs> or teachers about uh scholarships like letters of recommendations anyways okay next have a way to keep track of your scholarships and especially the ones you win it is crazy like i have applied to over probably 500 scholarships right now five six hundred scholarships by now and it's stressful um dual bold.org recently made a template that i've been using to help me keep track of my scholarships every single one that i've applied for and i will leave that down below for you guys and also there is a person on youtube she's really nice and she does scholarship videos too i'll try to link her as well they just came out with an app to help you save and keep track of the scholarships you have won and so that you can know like it shows you like okay how much money you have and then you can put in like what your your estimate of your tuition for the school you want to go to and you can like follow your progress so i really like that as well so i will um, make sure i have those resources down below for you guys um also i would set reminders on your phone or on google calendar i would actually do both because because you don't want to miss deadlines <laughs> and then I have set a routine and have accountability so I'll talk about both of those so have a particular day or a particular few days that you want to set aside for scholarship applying you know there's different steps so if there's a film day and you sit down and you record all the different kinds of videos and edit them and stuff for the scholarships that require video and then you have an essay day or something like that or you just take a few minutes each day to work on different scholarships so by the end of the week you applied for a few scholarships whichever way it works for you just try to set a routine so that it's not as tiring and it's not like interrupting your schedule rather it has now become a part of your schedule and lastly accountability it is hard to do it by yourself it really is it really is too when you're like why is this not working why is this not working i'm very frustrated and you're not seeing no replies for months because that's how the scholarship process works and you're like like what's going on but i have found that the accountability of my friends and my peers have help and so I made a group for you guys on Fiveable. Let me show you. I don't know why, but it won't load. But <laughs> anyways, I will have that link down below. I hope this video finds you helpful. And I'm sorry it took so long. Okay, bye.